Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson on the planes, surfaces, and landmarks of the body. This essential topic forms the foundation for understanding radiographic positioning. In this video, we'll cover appropriate medical terminology related to radiographic positioning, identify body planes, surfaces, and landmarks, and discuss the importance of technologists knowing these planes, surfaces, and landmarks. Let's take a look. When discussing radiographic positioning, anatomic position is the reference position for all planes, surfaces, and directional terms. Anatomic position is an upright position with arms slightly abducted, hands by the sides, palms forward, feet together, head directed straight ahead. This is also a general rule for displaying radiographs, as if the patient is facing the viewer in anatomic position. The four most common positioning terms used in radiology are projection, position, view, and method. Let's look at each of those individually. Projection is defined as the path of the central ray as it exits the tube and passes through the patient to the IR. The majority of projections are determined by entrance and exit points based on anatomic position. For example, if the central ray enters anywhere on the front or anterior surface of the body and exits the back or posterior surface, an AP projection is obtained, regardless of body position. Radiographic examinations are typically labeled based on their projection. Radiographic projections will be discussed in depth in a separate lesson. In radiology, the term position has dual meanings. It encompasses the overall posture or general body position of the patient, including upright, seated, or supine positions. Additionally, position signifies the precise positioning of the body part in relation to the radiographic table or image receptor during the imaging process. This relationship to the radiographic table or image receptor is also termed radiographic position and includes positions such as lateral, decubitus, and oblique. Radiographic positions will also be discussed in depth in a separate lesson. View is used to describe the body part as seen by the image receptor and is restricted to the general discussion of a finished radiographic image. View and projection are exact opposites. View is often used interchangeably with other terms incorrectly. Technologists may also see the word view on an order in clinical practice, such as a three-view wrist. This should be interpreted as three separate radiographic projections or positions as defined by department protocol. Certain radiographic projections and procedures have been named in honor of their respective developers. The term methods is used to describe these specifically named projections or procedures. Typically, the method is listed secondarily in the name of a radiographic examination. For example, AP axial projection or town method skull. The human body, when in anatomic position, can be divided into sections using imaginary planes that intersect the body at specific levels from various angles. Planes are utilized in radiographic positioning to accurately align a body part with the image receptor or central ray, ensuring proper orientation and alignment. Additionally, planes can be utilized to guide the projection of the central ray. The four primary planes are sagittal, coronal, horizontal or axial, and oblique. The sagittal plane passes vertically through the body from the front to the back and divides the entire body or body part into right and left segments. The mid-sagittal plane is a distinct sagittal plane that intersects the body's midline, creating two equal halves on the right and left sides. The coronal plane passes vertically through the body from one side to the other and divides the entire body or a body part into anterior and posterior segments. The mid-coronal plane is a specific coronal plane that intersects the body's midline, creating equal anterior and posterior halves. The horizontal plane passes through the body or a body part at a right angle to the sagittal and coronal planes, dividing the body into superior and inferior portions. This plane is also referred to as the axial, transverse, or cross-sectional plane. You can think of this as dividing the body into slices, like a loaf of bread. The oblique plane passes through the body or a body part at any angle among the previous three. There are also two special planes used in radiographic positioning that are localized to specific areas of the body. These are the interiliac and occlusal planes. The interiliac plane intersects the pelvis at the superior aspect of the iliac crests, specifically at the fourth lumbar vertebrae level. 
this plane is commonly employed for positioning the lumbar spine, sacrum, and coccyx. The occlusal plane is defined as the contact area between the upper and lower teeth when the jaws are closed. It plays a crucial role in positioning the odontoid process and various head projections. There are specific terms in radiology for the surfaces and parts of the body. The back half of the body is referred to as the posterior or dorsal surface. Think of a dorsal fin on a shark or dolphin. It's on their back. The front half of the body is referred to as anterior or ventral. There are additional terms that are specific to the upper and lower limbs. Plantar refers to the sole or inferior surface of the foot. When you plant your foot, the plantar portion touches the ground. Dorsal, when used in relationship to the feet and hands, refers to the top or superior surface of the foot, or dorsum pedis, and the back or posterior surface of the hand, or dorsum manus. If you go back to our example about the shark and dolphin, the dorsal fin on its back is on the top of the water when it swims, and the dorsal surface of the foot is the top of the foot. Palmer refers to the palm of the hand, which is the anterior or ventral portion when in anatomic position. Most anatomic structures cannot be visualized directly, so the technologist must use external indicators or surface landmarks to position the patient properly. The following are commonly used surface landmarks that are accepted averages for most patients. Keep in mind, these should be used as guidelines only. The technologist should always customize positioning on an individual basis. Body structures and corresponding external landmarks for the cervical area include C1, mastoid tip, C2 and C3, gonion or mandibular angle, C3 and C4, hyoid bone, C5, thyroid cartilage, C7 and T1, vertebra prominence. Thoracic body structures and corresponding external landmarks include T1, approximately 2 inches above the jugular notch, T2 and T3, level of the jugular notch, T4 and T5, level of sternal angle, T7, level of inferior angles of scapulae, T9 and T10, level of xiphoid process or xiphoid tip. Body structures and corresponding external landmarks for the lumbar, sacrum, and pelvic areas include L2 and L3, inferior costal margin, L4 and L5, level of superior most aspect of iliac crests, S1 and S2, level of anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS, and coccyx, level of pubic symphysis and greater trochanters of the femora. So, in summary, anatomic position is the basis for most radiographic positioning. When in anatomic position, the body can be divided into sagittal, coronal, horizontal or axial, and oblique planes to aid in positioning and central ray alignment. The back and front of the body are also referred to as the posterior or dorsal and anterior or ventral surfaces, respectively. The hands and feet also have specific terms for their surfaces, with the foot having a plantar and dorsal surface in reference to the bottom and top, respectively. The hand has a dorsal and palmar surface in reference to the back and palm, respectively. There are many surface landmarks technologists can use to locate body structures that are not directly visible. These external landmarks are found along the head, neck, and torso of the body and correspond to points along the vertebral column.